Importing data into a DynamoDB table used to be a pretty frustrating process. You either had to write a custom script or set up an EMR data pipeline. Both options were time consuming and frustrating. The good news is, is that you can now import your table from data that is stored directly in Amazon S3. And in this video, I want to show you how. So this is my starting state table here. You can see I have a couple different records that are already in here, a couple different data types. So I have customer ID as string, order ID as my sort key. I have a map here for address details. I have a string set and I have a number type here as well. This is just to show you that the table import feature works regardless of the types that you have in your DynamoDB table. Now, the cool thing about this feature is that you can take advantage of the DynamoDB export table feature so you can export your data into S3 and then import it into another table. Or you can just, you know, put some data in S3. You can craft your input files exactly how you want, maybe through a script or some other process or like a data dump and then import that in S3. So that's the approach that I took here. So let me show you the data that I have in S3 so we can see that as a reference. There are some quirks in terms of data format that I want to tell you about. So we're going to walk through that now. So this is my DynamoDB table here. It's just a export demo test table. And you can see here I have two different data files. So if we check out these files, we can see kind of very quickly what's inside of them. Just clicking open here. And you can see this first one if we just click on raw data. Now this, if we zoom in a little bit here to see what's going on, this is the DynamoDB JSON format. It's got the item here. It's got the customer ID, which is a string, the order ID, which is also a string. And then here are, yeah, here's your string set type here with item IDs. And then of course your map for address details. So you need to use the DynamoDB JSON in order for this to work correctly. Now, one thing that I want to point out is that this file only has one record in it, but it gets a little bit more interesting when you have more than one records in it, which you can very easily do if you have a very, very large import that you want to do. DynamoDB, by the way, supports, uh, according to their documentation, terabytes of imports. So if you have a really, really plentiful files or a really, really large table that you need to import, this is also supported using this method. So now if we look at that second file, you can see the format is a little bit different. So let's open this one up and this is going to have the other two records. You can already see here Firefox is saying like this isn't a valid JSON file, which is correct. So let's look at the raw data here. So just to zoom out really quick to see the, the pattern, you can see that this isn't a typical JSON array object. This is a basically a JSON list where you have one record, which is on the first line, and then a second record that's on the second line. And these are both independent JSON objects representing both of the records. So you don't have any commas at the end here, and you don't have any kind of key for these items. This is the format that it needs to be in. Now, I also want to point out that I kind of fudged this second record here. If we zoom in and look a little bit closer, you can see this first record here is fine. It's got our partition key, which is customer ID, and it's got our sort key, which is order ID. But in this second record, I don't have customer ID in it. And I did that on purpose because when you import with DynamoDB uh, for import from S3, it will try its best to import all the records that are in your files, but on records that it can't import, it won't fail the whole operation. It'll just emit log lines that tell you kind of this record's in import and here's the reason why. So I just wanted to demonstrate that in this video as well. So let's just close this really quick and go back into S3. Now, another thing that I did want to mention, if you are exporting your data from Dynamo into S3, and then maybe you want to import that same data into a separate table, your data is going to come in gzipped compression format. And it's going to have a kind of a subdirectory with all of the different, uh, there's like a manifest file in there or a manifest directory. There's a couple different directories. You need to make sure that when you do the import, Import, you give it the path to the data files here. So it'll be your gzipped files in that case. This is another little quirk that I found out as I tried to export and import uh, data from, from Dynamo. Anyways, this is the data that we're going to be working with here. So let's go back into DynamoDB now and actually try to import this. So in order to access the new feature, you just open up the sidebar here and you can see imports from S3, which is a new feature. So we're going to click on that. This is just one that I did earlier, just testing some things out. Uh, so we're going to go to the top right and click on import from S3. 
And then now you need to give it your source URL. So if you were working with a DynamoDB table export and trying to use that as an import, this is where you'd put the S3 bucket name, also the path to your data files. But in my case, it's a little bit easier. So let's just go to browse S3. I think I called it like DDB table. Yeah, so this thing here, we're gonna click on that and go to choose. And for S3 bucket owner, you can also do this if the data is in a different AWS account that is not this account. So if you want to use that feature, you need to make sure that whatever user you are has the ability to call get object on that other accounts S3 bucket. And in addition, you probably need an access policy on that S3 bucket to give this account the ability to read it. Um, so there's some good documentation on doing that. I'm not going to go through it here, but that is supported using this new feature. Now, in addition, you can also select the import file compression. So for our case, since I just had JSON, we don't need to do anything here. We just leave it as no compression. However, if you were importing a output from a DynamoDB table export, you would need to set this to gzip. Uh, so make sure you take that into account depending on the type that you are importing. So we're gonna leave it on no compression. And the cool part is, is that there's multiple different types here. So there's uh, DynamoDB table JSON, there's Amazon Ion and also CSV. I'm not sure how this one behaves when you have like complex types such as, you know, string sets or maps, but maybe I can experiment with that later, make a follow-up video or something. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and click on next now. And so this is where we need to set up the new table name. So let's call this new table imports. This can be whatever you want. Now you need to make sure that the schema is the same or else this is going to fail. So I'm going to set this as order ID. And then our sort key was customer ID. And I believe it's case sensitive as well. Actually, it tells you that here. Uh, so it definitely is. You can specify different settings on this table if you wish as well. So I'm just going to put this on provision mode, uh, sorry, on, on demand mode so I don't get charged anything. Also, if you have any GSIs on your table, you would need to specify them here. Although this could happen after the fact, it doesn't really affect the table import, at least uh, in theory, it shouldn't. But anyways, um, you can do that as part of this process or separately. And then uh, we're pretty much done here. We're just going to go ahead and click on next. So it's just giving us a confirmation page of everything that we just did. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom now. We're going to click on import. And sometimes this does take a little bit of time. Now, if you have a really, really large um, input data set that you're trying to import here, this can take several minutes. Um, so I'm just going to leave this for a second. I'll come back when this is all done. All right, so this is all finished up here. You can see that we have a status that is failed. Now, this is kind of misleading. Um, if you have any records that fail to import, you're gonna have a status of failed. It's just an interesting quirk of this new feature. So if we click on this import ID here, we can get some metadata about what actually happened. So we have you know, where the source URL was from. We have the new table name. You can see the error count, and this is you know expected because we modified the primary key of that record just to show how this works and then we can see the imported item count so if we want to take a look at the logs to see what went wrong i'm just going to command click on this guy here and that's going to open up a new tab also want to open up the table as well let's go take a look at the logs really quick to see what happened so when we get into CloudWatch here, you can see that there's two different log streams. There's one for errors and one for info. So let's open up both of these. And you can see this really isn't very helpful at all. It's just telling you kind of what happened here, starting to import. If we go back here, let's take a look at the errors. And if we expand this out, you should see, yeah. So in data2.json, which is where our problem uh, record was located, one or more parameter values were invalid, missing the key customer ID in the item. So this doesn't fail the whole operation. It just fails this item that it was trying to import. So let's go check out the new table now to verify that everything is set up. I think it's in this tab. Yeah, so new table to import. We're going to go to explore table items. Let's get rid of this stuff really quick. Yeah, now you can see that we have these two new items in here these are exactly as they were before we don't have that third order id in here which is as expected because it was missing the partition key so if you enjoyed this video check out my other ones on dynamodb on the left and right and i'll see you next time